All right, let's have a look at question 12 on that sample paper. So the coordinate diagram below shows the graph of the function y is equal to cos x for naught degrees is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so they've given us a plot, a graph of cos x and they've plotted it from naught to 90 degrees. This is what this means. The x axis goes between naught to 90. So that's called your domain in the functions chapter. And then this is called your range. Okay, so not to one. So it's the graph of y is equal to cos x. Okay, so a chapter that seems to bridge coordinate geometry, functions, and a little bit of trig here. Use a calculator to work out the value of sine 60 correct to one decimal place. Okay, so the first thing you need to double check is that you've got the little degree symbol up the top of your calculator and it's colored in, in, in dark, okay? That's D for degrees, okay? You can, you can measure um, angles in radians as well. Uh, so make sure you don't have an OR up there. If, if you need to change it, go shift mode setup. Of course, I'm on a Casio FX883 GT and three is for degrees and four was for radians, okay? But you don't need that. You'll always need three for degrees. So that's how you get that degree symbol up the top. That's the first thing, have a little look, make sure you're in degrees. And then just hit the sign button and you can see you'll get the open bracket for you. Put in 60, close your bracket, hit equals, and you'll get root three over two. And if you STD him, you will get 0 0.866. So round it to one decimal place, I need to look at the second digit. That's greater than five. So that means this one rounds up. So 0 0.9 is the value I get for sine 60. Okay, so that was a handy enough question. Okay, so draw the graph of y is equal to sine x on the diagram above using the same axis scales and domain. Note that sine zero degrees is equal to zero and sine 90 is equal to one. Okay, so the same domain, so zero uh, degrees is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 90 degrees, that's the domain. And that's very important because that actually tells you what your um, start and stop is on, on your functions, okay? So in other words, I'm going to start my x values at 90 or at zero degrees, and I'm going to end them at 90, okay? I'm not going to add in the 90 yet because we're going to figure out what step size we go up to. And then here, I'm going to have sine x, okay? Because that's what I was asked to, to, um, to plot. Okay, so then how do you figure out your step size? So we know what we're starting at. We know what our, we stop at. Our domain tells us that. So how do we figure out then what our step size is? Well, it's a bit like how you figure out when you're plotting functions. So again, you look at your graph and you see what makes sense, okay? It wouldn't make sense to go up in ones because there's a lot of points then between zero and 90, okay? 20 doesn't divide in evenly. If it was 120 would work. So I think I would fo follow what, what the, the graph here is doing and it's going up in 15s, okay? Nothing stopping you going up in tens. You just have a lot more data points, okay? So let me throw in a few lines. And let's see where we are. So zero degrees, 15 degrees, 30, 45, 60, 75, and I need one more for 90. Okay, so sine x. So how you do that is um, wherever x is, you replace them with all of these x values. So all the way across here are your different x values. So when you need to find sine x, replace it with zero. OK, so and, and we're going to use these two to double check that we're right. Make sure that when you put the sign zero into your calculator that you get that zero. Oh, wrong one. OK, so sign zero is zero. So sign 15 then, I'm going to roughly do it to one place of decimal because um, that's kind of all you can plot on a graph. So if I round him, he's going to be 0 0.3, okay? You could do two places of decimal which you, if you want, which is 0 0.26. 
I'll do that, um, but I'll probably round it again to one place a decimal when I'm trying to plot it. Okay, sine 30 is a half. That, that's a nice round number. Sine 45. And I get root 2 over 2, so decimalize him. And I get 0 0.707. So if I round him to do decimal places, that 7 rounds the 1 before it from 0 up to 1. Okay, sine 60 is 0.866. So again, round to two decimal places, I need to look at the third, so 0 0.87. Sine 75, 0 0.9659. So round that to two, two decimal places, that five will round that other six up to a seven. And sine 90, it's told me I should get one. So let's see if that holds true, so one. OK, so then to look at what you need to plot, you need to plot 0, 0 will be your first point. Um, so let's go back and do that. So there's our first point there on 0, 0. And my next one is 15, no 0.26. So 15 and up to no 0.26. Just somewhere there. Okay, glad I took two places of decimal now because that's more accurate. Okay, uh, 30 degrees is 0 0.5. So 30 degrees is 0 0.5. So over to 30 degrees and up to 0 0.5 for that one. Um, 45 degrees and 0 0.71. So up to 0 point, so just above 0 0.71 there. Um, 60 degrees is 0 0.87, so 0 0.87. And 75 degrees is 0 0.97, so nearly at the top. And then 90 degrees is one. Okay, and in the same way as this one nicely curved down, you're trying to get this one to curl up. Okay, so let me attempt that. So try, if you can, to keep your hands soft so that you get that curve, okay? A, a trig function, sine or cos is never a straight line. The same as a quadratic, it's never a straight line. So a sine wave is a wave like that, okay? So try and keep your hand soft. Okay, and just like they have labeled this one y is equal to cos x, every graph you plot needs to be labeled. So y is equal to sine of x is our graph there. Okay, and that's that one. Um, yeah, so use your graph from part B, estimate, okay? So, so you're not going to get it exact. So it's going to be an estimate, the point of intersection of y is equal to cos x and y is equal to sin x. So if we go back here, what is the point of intersection? Well, it's here, isn't it? It's where the two graphs cut through each other, okay? So what you need to do is you need to put a few construction marks onto your graph. So wherever you think that point of intersection is, so it's about 45 degrees. And we could say 0 0.71, something like that. So 45 degrees, 0 0.71. Okay, and, and what happens in, in your exam is that they, they have a little tolerance on all of this. So they might say, accept anything from 44 to 46 degrees and anything from maybe 0 0.69 to 0 0.72, something like that. That's what I mean by a tolerance, okay? Um, um, and, and there's no real tolerance on questions that says estimate. Okay, so I can see that question throwing a lot of people because it's a lot of chapters mixed together. Okay, um, I hope it's okay.